everyone, welcome to the anyonecanlearntocode.com Ruby tutorial screencast. As mentioned in the notes below the screencast, this tutorial assumes that you know absolutely nothing about programming and will teach you how to program using Ruby. Just make sure to watch the screencast in order because each episode will assume you've watched the previous ones. By the end, you'll be able to whip up your own programs and be able to go on to learn more advanced topics such as Rails, which builds upon Ruby. Now for a quick introduction to Ruby. As you may have gathered, Ruby is a computer programming language. A computer programming language is the language you use to talk to your computer. Computers don't understand the human language, so in order to get the computer to do what we want, we talk to it in a programming language, also referred to as code. The reason I like to teach Ruby as the first programming language is because it's one of the easiest to learn, and at the same time it's a language you can use to build professional software. As you may know, many popular websites today are written in Ruby. In order to talk to your computer, you must type the Ruby code in the right place. You can't just open up Microsoft Word and start typing Ruby. That won't do anything at all. You'll need to type your code into a program called an interpreter. If you type your Ruby code into a Ruby interpreter, then your computer will understand your Ruby code. In my notes below this episode, I explain the best way to install Ruby on your computer, and once you've done so, you'll, you'll also have access to a Ruby interpreter. If you haven't installed Ruby yet, there are some online interpreters you can use as well. Just check out my notes for more details. If you've read my notes, you'll know that you can run Ruby from this program called Terminal in Mac and Command Prompt in Windows. If you have Ruby on your computer, you can just type IRB in this terminal window and the Ruby interpreter is now running. You may not realize it, but you probably know some Ruby already. That's because Ruby is a language that often is similar to phrases and expressions that we use every day, which is what makes Ruby a pretty easy language to pick up. Let's enter 1 plus 1 and hit enter or return and there you have it. The computer understood what you were asking for and it just spit out the number 2. This little arrow thingy over here with the equal sign is just there to let you know that the 2 is what the computer gave back to you. It wasn't what you typed in, it's what the computer spit back, also called output. The regular angle bracket over here shows what you typed and this arrow over here shows what the computer spit back as a result. Also note that it doesn't matter whether you put a space between the ones and the plus sign. So you could enter 1 plus 1 like this, or 1 plus 1 like we did earlier, and you'd get the same answer. I'd recommend that you go ahead and experiment for yourself. Try your own addition expressions, 2 plus 3, 4 plus 6. Feel free to experiment with subtraction as well, 3 minus 2. 1,000 minus 789. I'd like to point out that these calculations we've been entering is actual Ruby code. And that's because the ability to add and subtract are part of the Ruby language. Now Ruby is specific and you can't just type in English sentences and expect the computer to do your bidding. For example, if I type thankfully it doesn't work. Ignore for now what the computer is saying back to us exactly, but you can see that it's some sort of error. That's because these sentences aren't part of Ruby. And even the fact that 1 plus 1 is part of Ruby isn't something to take for granted. In fact, there are other computer languages where if you wanted to add 1 plus 1, you don't type 1 plus 1, but instead you have to type in order to get 2. But Ruby doesn't work that way. In Ruby, as well as many other computer languages, the multiplication symbol is represented by the asterisk. So you can try a multiplication in the interpreter. 3 times 3, 7, 6, 24 times 17. The symbol for division is the forward slash, 9 divided by 3. Now, numbers are just one type of data or piece of information that Ruby deals with. Ruby can also handle and manipulate words, so we can take whatever words we want and have Ruby do with them whatever we want. Incidentally, in programmer speak, data in the form of words are usually called strings, and that's because words are strings of letters. To enter a string with Ruby, you must surround the word with quotes, and it doesn't matter whether you use single or double quotes as long as you're consistent. So let's type in a string or a word called cat. We've surrounded it in this case with double quotes on both sides. And we see that when you type in a string, the computer just spits it right back out, which isn't very useful. However, you can do useful things, 
let us take cat plus fish and add them together and see what we get. And we get catfish. Now does that make sense? Can you add two strings? So technically this process of adding two strings is actually called concatenation rather than addition because addition really just refers to numbers, but you get the idea. One really important thing to keep in mind is that you can learn a lot about Ruby just by experimentation. When preparing this screencast, I was curious to know if you could subtract strings using the minus sign. And the answer is that no, you cannot. But how did I know? I didn't look that up in any reference books. I just tried it in my interpreter. I just tried, hey, let's do catfish minus fish. And boom, I get an error. So that means Ruby does not support such an expression. You can discover some cool things that actually do work with experimentation. Just go crazy and don't worry about getting error messages. You're not breaking your computer and you're not destroying the internet. Here's another example I found from experimenting. Multiplying a word by a number. If you were able to follow this lesson, then you have the ability to learn to code. Just as this step was easy, all the future episodes are as easy as this one. They just build upon each other. However, the main key is practice. I cannot overemphasize it, so you'll hear me mention practice again and again. Thanks for watching. Anyone can learn to code.